Hey, Perry here, Taylor Sound, tip of the day. I just wanted to show you guys a little something that I've been doing in my rehearsal space. And I'm, we're doing a, a rehearsal space recording right now uh, with my band Silverseed. And one thing that I've been doing, which may be a little bit overkill, but I think it's going to be good in the, wrong, in the long run, is I've been doubling doubles, basically. I, I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. So first thing I do is I take two amps. One is a 1966 Fender Baseman, 60, uh, it's a four by 12, well it's a, I believe it's a 100 watt. Anyway, it's kind of a lower end, very, very breaks up pretty quick. Um, then it's got, uh, that's an Avatar cab there, it's got um, Celestians in it um say more about the speakers in a minute then of course on the right a marshall i believe it's 1974 uh it's a 50 watt lead it was actually a uh, bass lead and i converted it to just a regular lead <laughs> and then it's got a 78 uh, marshall cab um all eight speakers are are newer speakers they're not the the avatar cab is probably made in the 90s or something like that um but uh the 78 cab obviously that's a 78 but it's got newer uh heritage uh celestians in the the left and the upper left and the bottom right and then it's got vintage 30s on the upper right and the bottom left and the same with the avatar cab it's got um two of each speaker and um, so what I do is I put my, I'm, I've been using these Shure Beta 57s, which I think are really nice for this kind of thing. A lot of people swear by the, the regular 57s, and I think that's a quality choice too. I just kind of like the, the dynamic uh, range of the Betas. But um, I, put, uh, I put one on the upper right, so I believe that's a Heritage uh, in the Marshall. And then I put one on the lower left of the fender, which I believe is a um, vintage 30. So, I mean, either way, they're opposite speakers. They're, they're different speakers, different cabs, and they're also one is on the lower, one is on the upper. Um, so you're getting a little bit different uh, dynamic range of each speaker and each cabinet. Um, also... My effects rig splits stereo, so it goes out, goes out of each side. So all my effects and um, and even my gains, well, my distortions are aren't split in stereo. But anything effect wise, like a um, a tremolo or a uh, what do they call that? Not a Leslie sound, but you know, basically like tremolo and delay and reverb, they're all set so where they're they're going back and forth from each amp one you know so a delay will be panning so it gives a kind of a cool effect now live i don't use these amps i use these amps uh because they're smaller and they sound better live but for some reason on the recording these big cabs just sound really great so it's not all about the amps i'm not trying to talk about the amps but what i do <clears throat> is i record one track with one guitar um, in stereo, so I have a left and a right if I want to pan them that way. Then I take another guitar and I, I record it. Another guitar, the same thing, left and a right. So basically what I end up for each, each track, you know, maybe one track I'll use my Yamaha TVL, uh, and then maybe I'll use my Les Paul on the other, on the other double. And then what I end up with over here, and I'm using Logic, um, is I end up with, you know, this song is um, mostly my partner Charlie's guitars, but I'll end up with this is these these two tracks are the same same guitar track and then the same guitar track with different guitars. Now, once we get to the mixing phase, I could literally just take one of these tracks and use it. Uh, out of the four so let me just explain that again so these two tracks would be one guitar one is the fender one is the marshall 
this would be a second take of the a doubled the same guitar part with a different guitar this this would be the Marshall this would be the Fender now in, in the mix I could literally just mute all these other three and just use the the Marshall if I wanted to or mute everything else and just use the Fender Bassman with a particular guitar so I have all these all these options in terms of of guitars now you can, you can see we're getting pretty and then I'll probably most likely do that with all my vocals too um, double them now I won't use a double on every single take obviously that would get a little probably a little much I mean some people do but um, but when I send it to my mixing engineer I'll have him go through some of these tracks and and say hey you know on some parts you know just pick one guitar you know or just pick you know one double don't don't do both but um so that's what I've been doing and uh it leaves probably a lot of editing work I'll probably have to go through and clip all this stuff and but but it as I'm tracking I'm not always thinking about every single little detail I'm just kind of like laying a bunch of bunch of clay um and then it'll be up to me and the and the mixing engineer to sculpt it as it goes along but give you a little preview of some of this guitar stuff going that we got going here and turn the metronome off <laughs> forth um with different you know strategies when it comes to laying down tracks and i've gone through part times where i've been very you know meticulous uh, about just laying down what i want to hear in the eventual mix and i've gone to extremes laying down way more guitars than i know i'm ever going to need but this time i'm just basically just doubling almost every every guitar and using these two amps um, almost exclusively, I probably will use a, my Tremlux and my Lurkst uh, for a couple overdubs. But other than that, you know, this should give me a pretty good, <clears throat> good range of choices when it comes to mixing. And uh, you know, as long as you have enough room, you know, on your hard drive for how many ever tracks we're going to end up with, probably 30, 40 guitar tracks when all is said and done. Um, I think it's a good technique, and uh, if it doesn't clutter your mind too much, and the other thing that's important that I'm not always great at is labeling your tracks as you're going along, so you kind of know what's there. I mean, the other thing too is even if you don't label them, you can always listen to them. Does it sound good or doesn't it? So anyway, a little technique that you might that you might find helpful if you're doing some rehearsal recording uh, stuff. In the studio might not be the greatest thing because you don't you know you want to lay down what you want to lay down and get it done but in the rehearsal space i have all the time i need and um not not too worried about getting it done at a specific deadline so i just i'm just throwing a lot of paint on the canvas and we'll see what happens in the mixing process so hope that helps rock on <laughs> 